Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a review of a really kind of interesting new disc by Steve Reich, who hasn't had a recording come out in quite a while, actually. And it's on Nonsuch, a label which I really had no idea even still existed, other than to do reissues of things that sometimes used to be on Nonsuch. But evidently, it's still with us. Um, thank you, uh, Warner, for keeping it out there. Actually, I think it's still out there for like John Adams stuff too, but not much else. There doesn't seem to be any real activity there, and I don't see any reissues or things happening on Nonsuch, um, which is really a shame because, of course, it has an absolutely marvelous catalog with all kinds of cool stuff. But for the moment, we are only talking about Steve Reich. Now, this 35-minute CD contains two complete works, which are about 16 minutes each, because twice 16 is 32, 17 minutes, 34. That gets us up to about the 35 minute total timing. Um, the first work is called Runner, which is for an ensemble of 19 instruments, I believe. And the other is called Music for Ensemble and Orchestra. The larger orchestra consisting of strings, three trumpets, and an electric bass. Um, to add, you know, shape and definition to the bass line, which it does quite splendidly, I might add. It's really marvelous. I wish they used an electric bass in like Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven, where you really need wonderfully sculpted bass lines as well. It would be a wonderful sound. But let me see if it tells you who's doing what um, and how many people there are. Uh, the, the runner was, let's see, was written in 2016. It was premiered in London by the Royal Ballet and choreographed, whereas Music for Ensemble and Orchestra, which is very, very similar to Rudder, um, was given its world premiere on November 1st, 2018, with Susanna Malky, who is the conductor of this particular production, and she conducts extremely well. And uh, let's see, let's see who's doing what here. Runner, there it is. You've got like a violin, and you have another violin, and you have two, uh, two second violins, and a couple violas and cellos and a bass, and a flute, or two flutes, and an oboe, and a clarinet, or two clarinets here, and a couple of, of vibraphones for percussion. You have mallet stuff, and two pianos. And then that whole ensemble gets transferred um, to the larger orchestral frame. So the two works sound quite similar, not surprisingly. And not only that, they share the, the structure and format so that while one is kind of an enlarged concerto grosso and the other is an ensemble piece, um, you really, you, 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 they're more similar than they are different. Let me put it to you that way. Um, and how are they similar? Well, each piece has five movements. And those movements are structured in Bartokian arch form, in this case by rhythm, by the basic pattern of note values that uh, Reich chooses. And the movements are simply, they're entitled by those note values. They are 16th notes, then eighth notes, then quarter notes, then eighth notes again, and then 16th notes again. So it gets slower towards the middle and then opens out again in quicker tempi. And both pieces do exactly the same thing. And I'm trying, I'm looking here just to compare to see if they are also similar in terms of duration. I mean, of course, both of them are about 17 minutes long, as I've already said, but the movements do have different durations, which is kind of like a good thing, I think. Otherwise, they would sound ridiculously identical. Now, the note patterns are, you know, the 16ths and the eighths and the quarters. Those are the underlying tempos maintained by the two pianos, primarily. Oh, and, and to some extent, mallets and other instruments come and go to color the basic rhythmic pattern. But it's a perfectly steady pulse for the most part. Um, in this central movement, that pulse becomes a, a, a dotted rhythm, a rhythmic pattern with an underlying quarter note pulse. But it's, it's, it's repeated. It's an ostinato repeated over and over again. And I pity the two pianists because if I had to sit there and go, you know, for like minutes on end, I would go insane. It's kind of like string players who have to suffer through Bruckner doing nothing but tremolos. I mean, I mean, you know, Reich is by no means the worst kind of person who has insisted that performers, you know, to 
awful things for endless amounts of time. Sibelius, too. Like in this Fifth Symphony, it's like all string tremolos for half an hour. So yeah, the minimalists were not the first people to come up with how to torture your, mus your musicians, but <clears throat> you have to be absolutely metronomically accurate. And these players are. And Susanna Malky, is, we know, is just a marvelous conductor, particularly in contemporary music stuff. So she does a wonderful, wonderful job with it. Now, now, the, lest, lest you think that the pieces are totally monotonous for that reason, they're actually not. And the reason they're not is because there is great tension between the regularity of the underlying pulse and the frequently syncopated rhythms of the melodies that occur on top of that pulse. And, you know, the, the orchestration, I mean, you know, the, it's very beautiful. It really is. And these little fragments of melodies and things and tunelets that pop up now and again, they're, they're, they're extremely catchy and evocative. I, it's not the kind of piece that you're going to find deeply expressive, probably, of like, you know, traditional tragedy and happiness and whatever. It's, it's, it's more of an abstract art form. You know, it's like a Jackson Pollock or you know, some sort of shape turning in the light, you know, that kind of thing, a mobile or sculpture. But it's, it's extremely evocative and totally, totally honest in what it is. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I would not listen to both pieces one after the other because it sounds like you're hearing the same thing twice. And you'll, you'll, you'll have a better sense of the differences between them if you just focus on one and maybe listen to that a couple of times because it's not long and, and get a feeling for that one. And then you can hear the, the differences between the two of them because the differences are, they're significant, but they're not definitive. Let's put it that way. It's a lovely disc. It's wonderful to hear Reich, you know, up there still, still chugging it out, you know, the way he, the way he does in his own inimitable style. The sonics are beautiful. Um, and overall, the runner, which is the first piece, and music for ensemble and orchestra, which is the second piece, are lovely works. They're just lovely works, beautiful. I enjoyed them very, very much. And I was playing them here with my partner and he enjoyed them too. And you know, he's a rap guy. So I, I, I don't see why anyone would not enjoy this. It's, it's very evocative music. And it's like spacey kind of way. And, uh, Keep going, Mr. Reich. You did good. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.